I request His Excellency to please address the audience. So, bienvenidos a la Embajada de España. Welcome to the uh, Spanish Embassy <laughs> in New Delhi, in India. It's a great honor for us, for, for me and my team in the Embassy, to receive you, all of you, to host this important event, this hopeful event in, in India. And I suppose you are very used to, to hear ambassadors saying that we are very happy and very proud of having Her Royal Highness Princess Christina and Foundation La Caixa here in this event. So you are very used to, to, to hear this word, happiness or proud. But in this case, it's, it's a real thing. So there are uh, words uh, pronounced from the bottom of my heart in the sense that we have two reasons to be proud and to be happy of hosting this event this evening. The first one is that Spain is committed to uh, gender equality, to freedom, to progress. And I think these three values are uh, present in the event this afternoon, this evening. So that's why we are very happy and very proud to have Her Royal Highness Princess Cristina here with us and Foundation La Caixa but also because not only the government in Madrid, of the institutions and democratic institutions in Madrid are committed to these values. Also, we are humbling, trying to do the same in the Spanish embassy in India. And that's why these six months we are leading <coughs> an initiative, an European initiative, which is gender equality. So we also are committed with this value. And in fact, one month ago, when we uh, celebrated our national day, we think in the, we thought in the embassy, if we, uh, we need in this moment uh, a motto for the, for the party, for the cocktail, for the diplomatic co cocktail, and we decided that we will express a motto. And the motto was precisely committed to freedom, equality, and progress. That's why this word happiness and proud, to, to be proud of having this event in the embassy this evening are not simple words, are words from the bottom of the heart. So welcome to you all. Welcome, Princess Cristina. Welcome, Foundation La Caixa. And thank you very much for attending this event. And it's only the first event after the pandemia, and we will continue the next year and the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Her Royal Highness, the Infanta Cristina of Spain, is a director of international programs of La Caixa Foundation since 1997. Her Royal Highness is in charge of the global health and development projects in the world's most vulnerable countries, leading the implementation of more than 663 projects in 65 countries in collaboration with more than 800 organizations. Over the last 25 years, La Caixa Foundation has been focusing its international efforts in supporting women and young people, as well as research and progress in those diseases with the highest incidence in childhood, such as malaria, malnutrition, or pneumonia. Likewise, Her Royal Highness also manages the collaboration programs with the cultural and social foundations of the Aga Khan Development Network in her capacity as interagency coordinator of the Aga Khan Trust for Culture. In 2010, Her Royal Highness was appointed President of the Board of Trustees of the Barcelona Institute for Global Health, a public-private partnership focused on tackling poverty-related health issues through the, through the creation, sharing, and application of knowledge. Ma'am, I request you to please come and say a few words. Buenas noches. Good evening to all of you. It is a pleasure for me to be here this evening as director of the international area of La Caixa Foundation. I would like to start my presentation by sincerely thanking the Spanish ambassador, 
for his hospitality, and our colleagues from Development Alternatives for devoting so much time and effort to the preparation of the event, Jobs We Make, of the Work for Progress program. And of course, a warm welcome to all the entrepreneurs that have joined us this evening to showcase the products and their experiences, all that they are developing through their businesses. Congratulations to all of them. I would also ask if we could all give them a round of applause. It was given before, but I think we should do it now again. <clears throat> Let me first briefly introduce you to La Caixa Foundation. The foundation was created 118 years ago with a mission of building a fairer society with more opportunities for everyone. Today, our commitment to the progress of people translates into a long history of defending social causes, which we tackle in collaboration with many and different social organizations, trying to maintain a global and transformative vision and promoting innovation and rigor in all our actions. La Caixa Foundation places special emphasis on programs with the greatest transformative impact, such as those combating child poverty and social exclusion, stimulating employment, and helping to improve the living conditions of the most vulnerable populations. Most of the Foundation's programs are carried out in Spain, but since 1997, we have also worked on international cooperation programs focused on promoting global health through projects which fight against malaria, pneumonia, and child malnutrition, the main diseases related to poverty, education, emergency, and humanitarian aid, and job creation. This year, we celebrate the 25th anniversary of the International Cooperation Program of La Caixa Foundation, and we remain highly committed to generating opportunities and fighting inequalities, always aligned with the SDGs and the 2030 Agenda. We started our collaboration in India back in 2001. Since then, we have collaborated with more than 25 Indian and international organizations in a variety of programs, always focused on benefiting people from the most vulnerable communities. Since 1997, one of our main pillars of activity has been global development by promoting socioeconomic progress. In this regard, it is worth highlighting the Work for Progress program launched in 2017 with the goal of creating employment for young people and women through social innovation platforms in three countries, India, Peru, and Mozambique. Since then, Work for Progress has been recognized by international organizations such as UNDP and the World Bank. Work for Progress is based on a model of open social innovation platform through which we leave behind the financing of isolated projects, and we aspire to contribute to the construction of true innovation ecosystems in the regions where we are present. The main novelty of this program is the incorporation of new tools and methodologies in listening and identifying, identifying community needs, co-creation, and prototyping of new solutions. We also seek to explore scaling instruments, governance, new evaluation systems, and funding strategies. With an investment of more than 14 million euros, Work for Progress promotes networks of local entities, universities, and non-governmental organizations that work in a coordinated manner for the implementation of business ideas. Work for Progress has a diverse portfolio of prototypes and initiatives that are generating employment among the most disadvantaged groups. In this sense, since 2017, in India, almost 7,000 businesses have been created, more than 14,000 jobs have been generated, having reached 35,000 people. Work for Progress has achieved a good balance between the impact on employment generation and positioning itself as an area of experimentation and generation of new knowledge to be shared at an international level. These days, we have had the opportunity to visit some of the activities of the Work for Progress program 
in the region of Bundelkhand by the hand of Development Alternatives and Action Aid. And we have been able to share the successes and concerns of the entrepreneurs and other participants of the program. It has been very enriching for us to see their progress after such difficult years due to COVID. We are very impressed and we hope that, and we wish them the best and they can feel that they have our support from here onwards. Today at this event, we're going to learn more details regarding the achievements of Work for Progress in India in terms of employment creation and impact in the lives of thousands of entrepreneurs and also in terms of knowledge generation. Our role as promoters of the program is to contribute to the search of partners who are interested in taking advantage of all the knowledge generated, diagnostics carried out in the action areas, and are willing to join so as to increase the impact at the ecosystem level. We know there is still a lot more to do and that we must continue working to make progress in creating jobs and opportunities for young women and young people in general. I would like to end with a special mention and my most sincere congratulations to all the organizations that are part of the Work for Progress family, and of course, again, to the entrepreneurs for their endurance and results achieved until now. We encourage all of you to continue moving forward together joining forces and increasing the impact of your actions even further. From our side, we will remain committed to the program, working to ensure that the Work for Progress family continues to grow and with it, the future opportunities for young women and young people in India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Dr. Ashok Khosla chairs the boards of the 43-year-old Development Alternatives Group, headquartered in New Delhi and set up in 1983. The D Group was among the first civil society organizations to address the issues of sustainable development as a systemic whole. It also pioneered the concept of social enterprise, creating business-like approaches for eradicating poverty and conserving the natural resource base. Concurrently, he was co-chair of the UN's International Resource Panel from 2008 to 2016 and a member of the China Council for International Environment and Development from 2011 to 2016. He was president of the International Union for Conservation of Nature from 2008 to 2012 and president of the Club of Rome 2005 to 2012. Currently, he is chair of the Global Hydropower Sustainability Council. Before his position, Dr. Khosla served as director in Fotera, the first global environmental information system in UNEP, Nairobi. And as the founding director of the Office of Environmental Planning and Coordination in the Government of India, New Delhi, from 1971 to 1976. Also to mention, he is an officer of the Order of the British Empire. Dr. Khosla, please say a few words. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Royal Highness, Princess Christina of Spain, Your Excellency, Senor Jose Maria Dominguez, Ambassador of Spain, esteemed friends and colleagues. On behalf of uh, Development Alternatives and the Work for Progress program, I want to welcome you all to this very special event where people from a wide variety of experiences and backgrounds are coming together to exchange views and experiences on some of the most pressing issues facing humankind today. Of course, among the perfect storm of threats that confront civilization today, climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, resource depletion and destruction, there are very few that compare in magnitude and urgency 
to the need for creating jobs and income. It's the number one priority throughout the world, especially in emerging economies like India, and no less in Spain and in Europe. Uh, the situation of unemployment is so horrendous that uh, it's bubbled up to the very top of political priorities all over the world. There are in India more than 10 million new entrants into the job market every year. Uh, this is for India, and you can imagine it's four or five times that much for the whole world. Governments and big business cannot possibly create jobs at the rate needed. Government in India has a total number of people employed at various levels, all the way from the central government to the village level uh, public uh, organizations, a total of about 22 million people, employees. Uh, it, there's no way that they can absorb another 10 million every year. Big business is not much better. Big business has in India, the formal organized business has about 21 or 22 million employees and again, uh, it's not going to be able to employ very many more because big business has a very uh, difficult choice to make, which is to be uh, able to conduct its business without the inconvenience of large uh, labor, um, la labor uh, complement. And this means that we really now have to look at different ways to create jobs. The kind of numbers involved at the moment can only be dealt with by the what is used to be called the informal sector by the small and medium uh, sector of the uh, economy. The SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal, number eight, uh, asks all countries, and all countries have agreed to this, to create decent work for everyone and to create opportunities for economic growth from doing that. The targets set by the SGD, SDG 8 for 2030 uh, are um, way beyond reach at the moment at the rate that we're going. The ability of nation, national economies to absorb the growing labor force is actually very, very minimal. So many of the governments, including the Indian government, have uh, put this on a very high priority. And in, in our country, uh, the government is committed to creating jobs at scale and with speed through programs like Atmanivar Bharat, a self-reliance uh, program which is designed to create jobs. Uh, it's a kind of um, possibility that um, the, um, the um, economy can do in a very different way from the way it's doing it now. These would need decentralized jobs and enterprises that create production for the local economy and are able basically to use local skills, local uh, raw materials, local resources to create a whole new kind of economy. Civil society organizations, which are very deeply involved in this issue, uh, are not much better at creating jobs directly. They don't employ that many people. But they can help uh, economies, local economies, to do so in the manner that you saw this evening. Uh, our work in development alternatives is predicated on finding that jobs are best created most speedily uh, by small and local enterprises. And the Work for Progress program, which is supported by the Kaisha Foundation, is an excellent example of how to do this by bringing technology innovation, access to finance, and links to the market in a totally innovative way and be able to uh, help create the kinds of jobs that are needed. It's, uh, the Work for Progress program is now globally recognized. It's recognized by UNDP as a global best practice 
and a large number of other uh, recognitions have followed. Development Alternatives is the organization behind the work in India, has been around for 40 years, and its primary task has been to innovate various kinds of solutions for daily basic needs of human beings. We've developed a wide variety of technologies for shelter, for housing, uh, for water, for energy, uh, and basically this is frontier level work in which we have been able to generate totally new approaches to construction using waste materials, using fly ash from power stations, and a variety of other things where we have been able essentially to demonstrate that there are better ways to do things. The work that we're celebrating here today is about the jobs that are created at the same time while we do these uh, things. Construction, for example, is a great creator of jobs and a multiplier in the economy where you essentially uh, have a product that people need, there's a big market for it, and you have a labor-intensive technology. The Inclusive Entrepreneurship Initiative of Development Alternatives aims to enable millions of job seekers to, trans to transition towards becoming job makers rather than job seekers within the communities where they live, thereby leading to enhanced social inclusion and a sustainable economic growth. While doing so, if we make them green, you also benefit on the environmental end. Work for Progress, the program that we have here, promotes inclusive entrepreneurship, which is green, and is characterized by systemic economic transformation that enables underrepresented groups, such as youth and women and people in remote communities, to access entrepreneurship opportunities, thereby leading to social inclusion, quality employment, and sustainable economic growth. The program, as Princess Christina mentioned, was launched in 2017 in India uh, and has been supported very generously by the Kaisha Foundation. And it has now expanded also to Peru and Mozambique. And uh, there are other countries that will be following. Work for Progress makes a departure from traditional project-based efforts to an innovative approach to systemically address the growth, growing job crisis and challenges faced by grassroots entrepreneurs. It is unique because it has a long-term commitment. It means that we can choose approaches and solutions that have a, uh, a, a, a value in, in, in longer terms than simple projects can manage. And the systems that we talk about uh, are derived, in a sense, from the lessons we learned from natural ecosystems, where each part supports the other. And when we talk a lot in our uh, work, uh, in the Work for Progress program, we often mention a business ecosystem which can support long-term work and long-term solutions. The program has received major league national and global recognition. Uh, the uh, adoption of wor the Work for Progress methodology has been uh, spread quite widely by the UN Women, for example, with the Godridge AgroVet Limited, as well as government initiatives by the UP Livelihood Mission and other state programs. The e-rickshaw example that we heard about this evening has been uh, awarded a, a Spanish uh, organization, Iberdola Prize, and the Cl Club de Excelencia en Sostenibilidad. Uh, which is quite remarkable for a, a small outfit from a little village in India to be recognized uh, in other parts of the world. Um, and the three entrepreneurs that you heard from were awarded 
by the government of UP to promote green enterprises. So I would like basically to say that our work is often judged from, by outsiders by the numbers, the number of lakhs or crores or millions that, of jobs that we have created. But for us, it's not a numbers game. It's really quality that counts. The kind of transformation that you saw in the lives of the people that we work with isn't possible simply by a mechanical approach. It needs the kind of uh, initiatives and people that we've been able to put together, people who uh, infect the local counterparts in the villages with the kind of excitement and, and fun and, and idealism that you could see this evening from the women we were interviewing. This is something that Development Alternatives has tried very hard to build in the work culture of the organization to be respectful and to be able to convey the uh, incredible excitement uh, there has to be in everybody's life. Uh, the basic uh, result of that, as you can see, is a major transformation in both individual lives, families, households, as well as their communities. The program is now into its third phase. We hope to continue to do more of this work. Uh, we're shifting our focus a little bit to accelerating the scaling out of this to increase the numbers of people. So it's not that we're not mindful of the need for scale, but we will be doing all we can to maintain the quality and the excitement and the ability of people to feel that their lives are now totally different. So I want to thank you for giving us this opportunity, both the Kaisha Foundation for supporting us for so long and, and uh, for helping us see through all the possible opportunities, and to the ambassador for having uh, opened his home to us uh, so generously and uh, allowed us to have a good evening to share these ideas. Thank you.